before we start, may we just take some time to appreciate God and just bless him. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise now, as I, as we start God's word, looking into God's word, I want to assure you that uh, while we are fellowshipping together, God speaks to his servants in very different ways. So if God is saying something to you, please either text us or put it on the chat or uh, you know, so that we don't miss what he's saying through you. Sometimes uh, God can speak to, we are all servants of God here, and, and, and he may choose to say one or two things through uh, either of us. So please don't keep it to yourself. We want the whole house to be blessed. Uh, amen. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are delighted to have Bea back as well. Bea, we have missed you a long time. And uh, we believe all is well with you. Yes, we all is well. Here. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Good. Good. We're excited to have you back. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, as we, I'd like us to uh, continue from where we stopped last week. Okay, uh, but this, we're gonna take it slightly different. There are two questions I'm gonna ask, and then we're gonna trust, we're gonna uh, you know, dig out the answers from the word of God. Uh, where, uh, who we were, the question of who you were and who you are. These are the two questions we're gonna look into. Who you were and who, you are right now. Amen. Now, if you come with me, I'm just going to try to, uh, if you can help me pull out scriptures and, you know, take them on as quickly as possible, that would be amazing. All right. And I want to especially welcome everyone. Uh, that is online and those that are not online into the presence of God. We know that coming into God's presence every day, uh, every moment we come, there's always a refreshing that we receive. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord and knew every morning great uh, his faithfulness or his, is his faithfulness, amen. Praise God, praise God. Uh, and we just, Thank you, Father. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take off. Just I'm trying to connect to take off. So just bear with me. And we just thank you, Father, because you are good. All right. You are so good. You are so beautifully, beautiful, beautifully beautiful. You're just too much. You are beyond words. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. So Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1 to 6, anyone? If you can help us quickly, and we take our time to do it. And if you are writing, um, you just let us know. Ephesians chapter 2, amen. Verse 1 to 6, if you are there, help, help us, please. Hallelujah. And you, has he quickened? who were mm -hmm. dead in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit mm -hmm. that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, that's who we used to be. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead in sins, as he quickened us together with Christ, by, grace, uh, by grace are you saved. Amen. And has, and has raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord. So the scripture says, you were dead. That is a summary of who you were and, and who we were. We were dead. Remember, it's in the past tense. We were dead. It didn't say you are dead. We were dead. But what happened? In our sins and trespasses, but he quickened us. He revived us. He brought us back to life. So that's who we were. We were dead in our sins and trespasses, and he quickened. And how did he do this? This was done, and at the moment we came into Christ, all right? Coming back to life is coming back to, when you come into Christ Jesus, you are back to life. The life that God had originally intended for you to live, to have, it is his kind of life. Your spirit is no longer a stranger to God. Your spirit has now been recreated and you are able, you are, you've, been, you've been restored to the original picture, the desire that the father had in his heart before he created you. So you see that uh, to be born again, that is what the book of John chapter one, verse three says. John chapter one, verse three says, uh, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Am I right? Is that not what it says? Unless a man be born again, that is what it means to be born again. How does one get born again? How does one get born again? Amen. And someone said, what are you talking about? Are you teaching us how to be born again? We are mature in Christ. Oh, yes, we are all mature. But the interest of God is that we all come to the unity of, of faith so that those who are younger understand in the, you know, and those who are uh, more mature are reminded and reassured so that you are strong in your position and those that are growing can grow with the same assurance. So we come into oneness, no weaker part, no taller, no part taller than the other, no part weaker than the other. That is the intent of God so that we are all brought into the uh, becoming identical with Christ Jesus. That's what the book of Ephes uh, Ephesians chapter four says. How do we get born again? We get born again by putting, choosing to believe in God, amen? But believing and receiving Jesus, John 10, verse, uh, uh, verse 10 and 11, he says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Did I say John 10? Romans 10. All right. Romans 10. He says, if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and you confess with your mouth, uh, you shall be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the confession of the mouth, salvation is received. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hello. Amen. Now you see here, what does it say? Uh, look at me here. Uh, come with me here to that, that, that chapter again. Let's look at it. All right. It says, Verse nine, let's take it from verse nine. That if thou mayest confess, let me change this translation to something that we can understand in the 21st century. 21st century Bible is different. Let me read it from this translation. Okay, good. All right. It says here, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. A lot of people have asked, do we have to, why don't I, what if I believe just in my heart and don't say anything? No, no. Salvation doesn't work that way. And by the way, the car that you drive has a way it is designed to operate. Amen. The car you, you drive, some cars, all you need to do is to keep your key in your pocket and walk close to the car. And as you step in, 
trip in the car, you are going to see that as you press the, 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 the button, the startup button, the car works. There are some other cars you need to take the key out and insert it into the ignition, and then you twist it, you turn it before the car will come alive. Now, the turning of your car or the pressing of the button is because the car has everything within it already, it has gas, it has uh, good batteries, everything is at, 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 at its best, but it has to be activated. The engine has to be brought to life for the car to be able to move. So now the confession of your lips is the, is the turning on of the ignition, okay? You cannot say, I believe in my heart and God knows my heart and that settles it. No, anything, either salvation or healing, anything that you're gonna receive from the Lord requires faith for that thing in the heart and there has to be the turning on, on the, of the switch by what you say, you have to confess what is in your heart. You have to, I'm not talking about confession of sin now. I'm talking about declaring the faith that you have in your heart. You have to express it. That tells us that that is how God designed man to operate because that is how God himself operates. God has visions and ideas in his heart and then he releases them with his word. Amen. Come on, amen. That is the key to changing anything. That is the key to receiving anything. That is the key to the victory, to anything that is spiritual. Even physically, we do the same thing without um, arguing. Now he says, for with the heart, verse, verse 10, for with the heart, one believes and is justified. Okay? So when you believe in your heart, you are already accepted you are justified by God but with the and he says and not but he say and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation with the heart confession is made so you confess the faith in Jesus that you have with your with your all right praise God okay that foundation is laid all right as we get ready to go and, and as we are busy meeting people, talking about the kingdom of God, inviting people into it, or as we have needs in our lives that we want God to meet, and God brings us information by his spirit through the word or through somebody who is bringing the word or in any kind of encouragement, any information you have, you have to always activate it with your mouth. A amen. Praise God. Has this message blessed you? Would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? Kindly repeat this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for me and was raised from death for my justification. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit today, and I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. For personal prayer, ministry partnership, and discipleship with Prophet Jerry Samuels, kindly send us an email to info at newworldministries.net or phone 1-647-863-1000 for Canada or 1-470-592-1000 for the United States. Also, remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. God bless you. Now, come with me to the book of John. Uh, chapter one. Come, come back to John chapter one if you don't mind. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, take us. For those of us who are very uh, way ahead, please bear with us. Okay, as we come back to the basics and we take these steps together, please bear with us. Now, how this is how God works, and this is the reason why the confession of the mouth is so important. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, all right? The same, you say he was in the beginning with God. So the word is a he, the word is a person. Can you see that? The word is a person, all right? Now, when you are speaking the word of God, you are, you are 
how do I put it? You are, you are prompting a person, okay? They are not just careless words. They are not religious words, okay? When you are activating the word of God, you are, you are beckoning, you are prompting a person. So he says, all things, verse three, he says, all things were made through the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Anything imaginable, anything. Remember, it is not possible for man to imagine something that God has not already created, whether it is physical or, or visible or invisible. You cannot imagine something that God has not already created. Amen. That, that is amazing. So sometimes in the dreams and desires that you have in your heart and you see them, sometimes some of us brush them aside and say, hey, I don't know how this is. This is just my mind. No, 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 no. You can't do that. Every thought that, that is good that comes to your, your heart, to your mind, is God sending you a signal. God is sending you a signal. It may look impossible to you because of the circumstances surrounding you. It may look impossible to you because of the position you currently occupy. It may look far-fetched because of when you look within yourself, it doesn't appear like you have the well without. Though it is not, let me put it this way. God does not invite you to the race because you have long legs. He invites you to the race because he can run. Amen. God does not invite you to a fight because you, he sees your ripped chest and seven parks or eight parks. No, those things don't impress God. In fact, the Bible says that God does not rely on the strength of a man or a horse. Your, your academic qualification, your brain power, your abilities, whatever they may be, your finances, whatever they may be, God does not rely on these things to, in, you know, he's not motivated, he's not inspired by these things. So whatever he brings into your mind is achievable by you. Now, while someone may say, uh, well, he's too full of himself, it is better to be full of yourself with the ideas of God than to have no idea at all. Amen. Amen. But how God works is before he does anything in your life, he will advertise it in your mind, on your mind first. He will bring you the desire first. He will flash the cards for you. All of a sudden, things are beginning to come into your mind. And now when these things come into your mind, remember here, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So as you see these things, begin to speak them out. God does the, it brings the advertisements through his thoughts. It is you that will express them and give them life through your words in the physical realm. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I speaking to somebody? Anytime you shut down a thought because it seems impossible, you just close the door of opportunity that God has given to you. Come with me again. He says, in him was life. In what? In who? In him. Who is the him? The word. Who is the word? Christ. Hello? Hello now? In him was life. I like to read it, I like to read it this way. In him is life. Because it still is. And this life is, this is how I read it. I don't read worse because I live in the presence of God and we live in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, there is no tomorrow or yesterday or, or day, day after. There is always now. The language of faith is a language of now. Amen. Is a now language. Every time God is speaking, he speaks about now. Now, he says, in him is life. This is my translation. That's how I'm reading it. This is uh, uh, Pastor Jerry's uh, version. In him is life, and the life is the light of men, of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. All right? The light shines in darkness. So he's talking about him. Amen. That is the word. 
And the same, the same word is the word that Jesus said, the word of God said, you must speak in order to see the manifestation of what the word can do. Hello? It, the word is sent pregnant with the plans and the will of God for your life. You become the midwife. And the midwife has to be careful how he helps deliver the baby. Amen. You are the midwife that is coming to say, okay, you lay down like that and you prepare the person who is going to deliver. I don't know how they do it. I've not been allowed to go close, but uh, except with my wife, you know, but you know, all the, the every, every woman's process is different, I believe. But you see, you are the midwife that is to help deliver the baby. Can you now see why the angel of God had to shut up the mouth of Zachariah, the high priest, so that Zachariah does not ruin the delivery of his own son? Why? Because Zachariah was so full of doubt at the time. So his mind was in interfering with the plan of God. And he, God understood, the angel also understood that when a human being thinks, the next thing is going to talk. So while you are thinking doubts, let me lock up your mouth so you don't deliver something that will interfere with the miracle, with the plan of the father for the generation, not just for Zachariah, but for the generation. Oh, come on now. Let me just digress a little bit and tell you something here. Just a reminder. Now, when God brings you ideas or when God chooses you to uh, accompany him as th through his projects, you think, sometimes we think that it is about us. No, no, it, it is, you are included in the plan, but it's bigger than you. Amen, I'm getting myself all excited. You know, it is bigger than you. So when you see it and you are making excuses and you say, I don't have the time for this now, I can't do that right now. I don't, I don't this, I don't that. What you're doing is, you are looking at your own ability and shutting down an opportunity for an entire generation. Can you imagine if John the Baptist wasn't born? Can you imagine? So the angel had to lock up his mouth and he couldn't talk until the day the boy was born. Please learn from, let us learn from Zachariah. You don't want God to shut your mouth so as not to interfere. Be careful how you help in the delivery of the baby. Hey, if you don't understand it, just say, yes, Lord, go ahead. Mary did the same thing. Mary said, I don't know how this is going to work. I've never been with a man. The, whole, the angel said to Mary, Mary, don't, don't relax. Is the power of God that will come over you and then you'll be pregnant and you will give birth to a baby. That's all you need to do. And what did Mary say? Mary, all that was still above Mary. And in, in fact, it's still above me, my understanding. But Mary did something right. Mary said, let it be to your handmaid according to what you have said. Mary did not understand it, but he said, yes. Amen. Come on, amen. Uh, 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 now I don't know. As I'm speaking, I'm hearing I'm hearing God say for the uh, is the, I don't know whether it's one person or two that ideas are coming to you to diversify your business, you to to diversify too. But sometimes you are there is a particular person who is hesitant, maybe because you don't understand. All right, I leave it at that. If it's you, just let me know so that I. Confirm that I'm hearing well. Amen. So the word of God, without the word, nothing can be made. Nothing has ever been made. Nothing is being made and nothing can ever be made. Amen. Now come to me, come with me uh, to the book of Romans again. He says, therefore, chapter 10, verse 9, he said, for with the, uh, when a man believes in his heart, he's what? justified you may be qualified for something it doesn't mean you will receive the thing 
until you can now activate it. You say, oh, well, I'm qualified for it. God, I am in Christ Jesus. The blessing is, uh, you know it in your heart that you are qualified for all the blessings that God has uh, given to us in Christ Jesus. So you just keep quiet, waiting for God to deliver it. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to speak it. Then you receive. Amen. You have to speak it. That is how it is designed to operate. Hallelujah. So the summary of the first question is, who were you? You were dead in sin. It is the word of God that brought you back to life. It is the word of God that brought you back to life. Amen. The word is a person. is referred to as a he. Amen. And that word has to be released. You have to agree with the word in your mind, in your heart, and then you have to release. You have to release it in with your mouth before it will discharge the, the saving power into your life. Before it will discharge the living power into your life. Before it will discharge the healing power into your life. Before it will discharge the ability to make progress into your life, you have got to speak. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the second point. The second point is who we are. Who we are. Now, before we move into who we are, I want you to uh, uh, be reminded of the instructions of God not to look back ever to who you used to be and to sever every connection with who you used to be. I'm not talking about who you used to be 100 years ago. I'm talking about who you used to be even when you woke up this morning. Amen. Amen. You are a brand new person today. You are a brand new person. The devil will always remind you of what you used to do, how many times you failed, how many, uh, you know, the, the, the pile, the, the ton, how many tons of sin you have committed. But the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, anybody there? He says, I, even I, I am he that has blotted out your transgressions for my own sake. Not because you prayed well, not because you attended church well, not because you are a tither and a giver, not because of anything you have done, not because of anything your parents did, not because I'm scared of you, not because of where you come from, where you live, your status in the society, your financial position, your academic position, or it, it has nothing to do with anything that a man or anything on earth. He said, I, even I am he that has blotted out your transgressions for my own sake. So in other words, I have a reason for doing that. And he says, and I will remember your sins no more. So he said that I think if I, if I look at that verse, well, he said, put me in remembrance. Am, am, am I right? Am I right? He said, put me in remembrance. No, no, no. It doesn't mean that God forgets, but you're repeating it to yourself helps you to remember and to keep making progress toward the Lord with confidence. So he says, keep saying it to me. I have been forgiven. I have been forgiven. Can you say it after me? I have been forgiven and God does not remember my sins anymore. Hallelujah. You have been forgiven. Fighting with your husband, you've been forgiven. Fighting with your wife, you've been forgiven. Stealing, cheating, you've been forgiven. Whatever it was that you have done that is called sin, you have been forgiven for the sake of Christ. Not because you speak in tongues. It's not because you can quote the Bible. No, it is because of God himself. God decided within himself to show you mercy. And he says, your past, I don't remember. And I don't want to remember. Now, if God chooses to forget about your sin and you keep looking back at your sin, guess the kind of faith you will have. 
because what you give your attention to is what will dominate you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, amen. So we have got to give our attention to put, bring your thoughts in alignment with the thoughts of God. Don't claim to have a better memory than God. God has decided to do selective forgetting. Amen. Is there anything like that? All right. I just invented that term. God has decided to do selective forgetting. Don't we do selective hearing? And it's even advisable to do selective hearing. So God has decided to do selective forgetting. He says, I will never forget you. I will never leave you. I will never walk away from you. Can a mother forget his suckling? God said, no. But then he said, even if they did, they do. I will never, because your walls are engraved upon the palm of my hand. But when it comes to your errors of the past, he says, I don't remember. So you don't remember, then how come you remember? Because you have somebody called the adversary, Satan. Satan is the one that brings flashback. He throws the junk, the gunk. He pours them into your mind so that you remember your weaknesses. You remember your inabilities. You remember your failings. You remember your sins. And every time you remember these, many of us say, oh, I used to be a sin. I want to be humble. That is no humility. That is stupidity. Amen. It's no humility to, for you to say, I want to be humble and say, we are all sinners. No, no, you are no longer a sinner. If you were a sinner, you still be dead in sin. But he says he quickened you. He brought you to life unless you didn't truly believe. But if you did truly believe, none of us here today is a sinner. You are not a sinner. If you were a sinner, then the death of Jesus is not effective when it comes to you. If you are still a sinner, then God lied. Because you said you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. And then the Bible says you shall be saved. The fact that you allow Satan to put, to pour out the junk. What do you call them? Trash. He puts out your trash for you. If constantly reminding you does not mean God remembers them. The reason why he does that, he wants to trap you into your past so that you are not useful in your present. So that he would disengage you from your present because your present is where God is. God lives in your present, your present, your present. The moment, this moment, God is there. God is not living in your past. He's living in the moment. He's doing new things in, the, in your moment. But if you are trapped into the past, you have no idea what is going on in the moment. Though you may be alive, but you are not participating in the agenda of God because you are not connected to the now of God. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. That is why the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, I think, chapter 10, he says, bring all your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, can I tell you something now? Don't quote that verse. Just do the verse. Don't quote it. Quoting it doesn't mean your thoughts are being brought. Just do it. A lot of things that we quote, we use them wrongly. Many things are not meant to be quoted. They are meant to be activated. Activation and repeating what I said is that I can repeat all you said. It doesn't mean that I have what you do. I have friends that are successful in academically or financially or in one area or the other. If I keep telling about his or her success or telling about in that area, it doesn't make me succeed. I have to go, as I'm talking about it, to encourage me, I have to go and do what they did. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he said that you should bring your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Bringing our thoughts captive. In other words, I say to myself, that thought, Satan, that thought is not my thought. It's yours and it has no place in my life. And then I replace it with the thought that originated from the word of God, from the spirit of God. Oh, Lord, I give you praise because you are the one who chose to forgive my sins for your own sake, 
and you said you do not remember them. So I'm free. Amen. Can you see I've just activated it? And as I keep repeating that, I say, God doesn't remember my sins, so I choose to forget too. It doesn't recollect my sins. I choose to, my past is history, is gone. I don't even know. I begin to talk about now and I will continue. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Somebody came to say, you, what did, why did you do this? What did you do this? Tell the person, I don't know what you are talking about. Satan is very tricky. Tell the person you don't know, you mean you are lying? How can you say you don't know what you're talking about? Remind the person that now that I am in Christ, it now, mark my word, not yesterday, now that I'm in Christ, all things have passed away, all things have become new. I don't know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. Now